Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today is going to be a fun one. Uh, we're going to talk about my go-to paints. So I'm going to go through, I organize this by brand. Uh, this has been something that's been requested of me multiple times. People often ask what I like, what colors I like to use. And so I thought I would just make a video where I put all of my favorite paints uh, into one video as a resource for people uh, if you really want to see the types of paints I use. Uh, one thing I'll say is that I use a huge amount of different brands of paints. I have very little loyalty with one exception. I use paints because I like the color or I like the way they act or I like the way they blend or whatever catches my fancy. I also just love paint. I have a problem. I will admit that. And uh, so this is, it's just a good chance. Like I, I always love new paint ranges and picking stuff up and trying it out. So today I'm just going to kind of go through the paints and then why I use them and what I enjoy about them. So here we go. Let's get into it. All right, so we begin with Vallejo model slash game color. Uh, so these are the thicker line of Vallejo paints. Uh, you can see that I'm not going to read everything. You can see it here on the screen. I'm not going to sit here and read to you what you can already read yourself. Uh, but I'll say this is the most common paints of these I use. Uh, a couple of quick mentions. I will oftentimes, uh, I have a bunch of different whites, grays, and brown type colors you'll see in here. I use them all and for a lot of different purposes. Uh, that is to say, like, here you see things like pale sand and ivory. Uh, you'll see those kinds of colors reflected in multiple lines. I like all of them in different ways. I will use all of them in different times. Um, I like lots of different versions of near whites, off whites, warm whites, cold whites, stuff like that. I find them all to be very useful. The main tone is act to me is actually the least exciting part. So that is to say, what's going around the color wheel, I actually find to be the sort of least exciting thing about the entire premise. Uh, I much prefer how you then shade and tint that color. That is to say, increase the light and decrease the light and find that to be far more interesting because you say a lot more about a model through the lighting scheme that you put it in by how you make colors warm or cold than how you happen to choose red or green. Uh, really, for the most part, I think with the, the, you know, you could paint with just one primary around the, the sort of color wheel and, and the rest would all just be some interesting addendums to go from there. Uh, but at any rate, uh, the we'll start with ice yellow and glacier blue. Uh, these are your, this is your upper warm highlight and upper low highlight. So I don't tend to highlight with pure white very often outside of, say, non-metallic metal or something like that. These are actually my highlights. If I want to set something to warm, I'll usually use ice yellow or something similar. There's a couple other different colors very like that. Uh, if I want something to be cold, I'll use glacier blue. And I really love glacier blue a lot mixed with, frankly, almost anything. It can, it can have such wonderful effects on so many different colors. Uh, turquoise and blue green two very close colors but things I use a lot for oxidation I, I happen to use turquoise a lot in my models which is probably not a shocking statement if you are watching this video uh, and so those show up a lot I happen to like those tones they're both quite rich uh, ivory and pale sand like I said they're just two different types of white I use these are often two I use for dry brushing over terrain or just dry brushing in general in early parts of the model uh, dark sea blue is a wonderful wonderful color that I'll often use as the base of my non-metallic steel. It has a wonderful deep, deep blue tone to it, uh, blue, black, gray, that is fantastic for the sort of base color you can mix up non-metallic metal from. And heavy warm gray is just a great reset color. If you've been working with an airbrush or something, or you have a lot of complicated colors already and you need to reset an area to a neutral tone so you can lay down something bright and thin like yellow or red over top that's quite transparent, Heavy warm gray does the job. One coat, has super heavy pigmented, and you're off to the new color. All right, Vallejo Air. Uh, Vallejo Air uh, is something I'll often use, especially through the airbrush, quite obviously, but I also use it a lot for brush painting. Uh, Hull red is by far one of the most common colors I use, period. 
It is my warm shadow, so if I'm using that aforementioned glacier blue highlight uh, and I'm setting a cold highlight, I'll set a warm shadow. So hull red is kind of my go-to. It's a very deep red brown, which I, I like a lot. I'll also just use it as a deep shadow on you know brown tones and uh, uh, you know, I'll work some of it into blacks to make them more interesting. There's just it has a lot of uses. Uh, Cement gray and white gray uh, and cyanide gray are things I'll often use for concrete, for stone, for masonry, all those kinds of things, especially in like bases. But they're they're great for all those sorts of neutral tones. They're 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 gray colors that are interesting. Cold gray is my mid tone on my zenithal prime, so that gets a lot of use, more or less solely for that reason. I don't actually find much cause to use it beyond that. Uh, here it's listed as beige, but 71.074, I have a version of it that's called Radom Tan. I don't know what that means. It's probably, I got a different, like, country's version of it. But it's a great color. It's beige. It's extremely yellow white. So it's lovely, especially when combined with that ice yellow. It can be a great step down. It can be great as uh, sort of an upper color of a non-metallic, uh, like gold, copper, whatever. Uh, and then finally, Light Rust, which is my favorite uh, shadow color for yellow, as well as a great color to set for the base of your warm Zenithal Priming. So these are my go-tos a lot uh, with all of uh, with, with the Vallejo Air colors. Uh, both model and game. These happen to be more model, but there you go. All right, next up we have Citadel and GW, and I decided to use some of my photos of my actual paints here so you can see how much these things get used. These are midway through some of the bottles I have, and there are a score of dead soldiers, that is to say the empty pots, of course, beyond this. Uh, and they, I'll start with the washes that I find are, have value, which is Nuln Agrax, Seraphim Sepia, and Reichlin Flesh Shade. Uh, I find those four to be the things I use. I don't you really use them often for how they're intended. That is to say, I don't generally wash miniatures. I actually don't think it's often very useful, uh, especially on large flats and things like that. But I do occasionally for things that have extremely heavy texture. So fur or micro texture will usually get a wash, and I'll often stick to some of these colors. Uh, Reichland is, as you saw if you've watched my How to Speed Paint an Army in a Week, if you put Reichland Flesh Shade over sort of a zenithal containing ivory, it will suddenly become Caucasian skin tone over two coats. So there you go. Uh, Blood for the Blood God and Nilic Oxide, two technical paints. The technical line from GW I, are, I find highly valuable, and both of those are great technical paints that I often am going to for things that they would be used for. That is to say oxidation of, of uh, coppery type uh, metals and of course getting blood on things. Abaddon Black, uh, I often will use as just a simple black paint if I need it. I don't use a lot of it, but when I do, it's actually quite a nice, slightly satin black that I enjoy. Uh, I also use it to do the edge rim on the base, so <laughs> there you go. It gets used on every model, I suppose, to some degree. And Bugman's Glow, I find to be a really, really nice color. You can see, by the way, I decanted those into these large bottles uh, because I didn't... I hated the... <laughs> I hate normal pots. They drive me insane. I would never use them for normal paints. So uh, Bugman's Glow, I just find to be a really nice base, like really warm skin tone for when you want somebody to have a suntan or something like that. It's just, it's a really nice tone that there aren't a lot of analogs to in other lines. And it's a strong color. It's, it's one of the baselines, so it's quite heavily pigmented. I just really find if you're going to do things like dwarves or, you know, barbarians or people who are sort of out in the sun a lot and, and you want to seem weathered. It's a, it's a great go-to uh, and just a really nice tone overall. Uh, next up, we have the contrast line, obviously a more recent introduction, but there are paints out of here I use quite often. By the way, you can see that yellow I haven't used in a few weeks because it's separated out. You gotta, that will happen with those contrasts. Make sure you do shake them back up. Uh, I hadn't noticed that when I took the picture. That's funny. Uh, at any rate, Agreros Dunes, Flesh Hound Orange, Ayan and Yellow, Akelian Green, and Fire Slayer Flesh. These have a lot of different uses. Uh, Ayan and Yellow is actually one of my go-to yellows. I uh, Same with Griff Hound Orange. I find them to be uh, a great yellow, a great orange. I use them together a lot when I want to use those colors. Things like Fire, 
uh, Imperial Fists, stuff like that. I, I really like those colors. Uh, Agreros Dunes I use quite frequently for things like weathering and streaking. Because the contrast paints shrink, you can actually do a lot of quick weathering and streaking with them if you want simple things. You can mix it down with the medium. Makes great staining on metal when you're trying to show like oil and stuff like that. Fire Slayer Flesh will be much like Reichland Flesh Shade, only a heck of a lot heavier, so when you want to get that color in there. Both of those I'll often use just as thin filters, but with slightly different purposes. Uh, it's that is to say, I won't use them straight out of the pot, as it were. I'll put them on, a, on an actual palette and then thin them down with some kind of medium and use them as just a filter to add tones into uh, other flesh tones. Uh, Achillean green I just love because it's Achille ain't green. That's the biggest lie. It is not green. I don't know what universe that is green in, but it isn't this one. Uh, it is a very blue color. Now it is a somewhat blue green, certainly, but it's a still very much sitting in the blue area of the wheel there. Uh, so uh, Achillean green I just love. It's a super bright blue. It's just it's a lot of fun to use, and all of these go wonderfully through the airbrush. So that's often how I'll use them if you saw say the imperial fist video how to paint uh, yellow with imperial fists you would have seen me use the iandan yellow quite heavily pro acryl uh, one of my favorite new lines of paints they're heavily pigmented they're wonderfully opaque they're smooth as butter uh, and you can you can thin them to just just the high heavens and back and they will retain their pigmentation and not break up so they're just one of my favorites uh, the, again, you see a lot of like off-white tones here in the olive flesh, bright warm gray, and bright ivory. Much the same things as before. These will often be tones I'll use for uh, white or gray clothing if that's gonna if that needs to be used. The olive flesh is actually just a pretty straight analog to uh, a warm white. It, it's not actually very flesh tony at all. It's slightly mislabeled, but it's a wonderful tone. So I use it quite a lot. The bold pyrot red is actually my go-to red. It's bright as just my god is it a bright red it's wonderful how intense it is and i don't know if they're actually using that pigment my understanding is that pyrote is actually the uh, sort of a really nice red pigment that has a bright red to it i would assume since it has that name on there it has that pigment in it but i haven't asked jason if that's what's going on or not so uh, but it's a great color whether or not uh, mahogany is another shadow color i'll use often for uh, again, warm shadows, it will be the bridge, often between whole red and whatever the uh, sort of adjoining thing is that I'm shading for, for flesh. Uh, it has a really, really nice red-brown tone to it that I love a lot. Black-brown is a color I use quite a lot on things like belts and leather. It's my, a deep shade that you can make look really nice for sort of old, dark leather. And the yellow ochre is just a great ochre color, good for uh, non-metallic, good as a deeper tone on your yellows. Works great in tandem with something like that Iandan yellow on the previous slide. All right. Next up, war colors. Uh, so war colors, uh, I'm a big fan of, obviously. Uh, I use them quite frequently. They have their gel-based medium. There's a lot of tones in here that I like. Uh, Flesh 5, much much the same way that I like Bugman's Glow, I like Flesh 5. It's a blue shadowed flesh tone. So when you're doing warm highlights on flesh, people standing out in the sun, it makes a great shadow color because it's effectively a wonderfully pre-mixed blue shadowed flesh. So I'll often glaze that in. Uh, Ochre 1 makes a great high highlight on uh, on flesh tones uh, for like your spot highlights when you want to catch the sort of oil sheen of skin and you want just like that that little tip of the highest highlight pushing beyond something like an ice yellow i'll use the ochre one still not white it's still not pure white but it has a great really bright tone to it there's a couple others i'll use as well on occasion uh turquoise for the, the whole turquoise range the whole purple range purple's not purple it's pink <laughs> the purple line is that says it's purple is not they're all the pinks and they're great pinks, as a matter of fact. I like all of them. Uh, so all the purples are a great investment. All the turquoises are a great investment. They actually have a wonderful range of tones in them. Uh, as you can see, I like turquoise. I like pink a lot. It's going to come up. I use those colors a lot. You want to know what colors I use? It's going to be a lot of turquoises, you know, in the blue-green spectrum and in the, in the pink-magenta spectrum. I just I really like those tones. Uh, at the same time, violet 3 and 5, those are great uh, mid purples there there are i should say violets they are truly violet in that case uh the fluorescent pink is my go-to 
pop, 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 pink. You'll see the other half of that in a moment. I love the fluorescent line in general. I think it's wonderfully bright colors. The orange and the green are both great as well for things like the orange is good for uh, things like orange plasma weapons when you want those to really have a nice kick. The green is great for things like warp zone and toxic waste and all that kind of jazz. Uh, and then finally, the glaze line. I love the glaze line. I think it's wonderful. If you have a problem mixing glazes, if you find it challenging, uh, the glaze line is not huge. There's a green, a brown, a yellow, a red, and a blue. They're all pretty standard colors, but they are pre-mixed glazes that you can just literally squeeze out onto your palette, you know, get a little bit of a moist brush, take a, a little dollop of it and put it on the, on the miniature and then just smooth it out and bada bing, it's a glaze. Uh, no other mixing or thinning really necessary. So if you found challenges with that, I would highly recommend that line as it is a great shortcut and a cheat. So also the red glaze, which is the one I featured here in the picture, is great for getting those like really bright red pops where you just glaze over some kind of warm yellow, bright yellow, like ice yellow or white. You lay down a couple of glazes of this, you get a super bright, intense white. Or sorry, a super bright, intense red. Scale 75, we'll start with Fantasy and Games, which is their uh, their more sort of traditional line. These act more like sort of Vallejo paints. They use a different medium, uh, more of a liquid medium. The My go-to colors here are all over the map. These are often colors that I actually like when we talk about color colors. Uh, Harvester Flesh is one of my, is a nice pinky flesh that I'll often use as a highlight. Arbuckle's Brown is a really super nice purple brown. That again, I like for shadows on things like flesh or uh, alien type skin or just, you know, in sort of deep leathery shadows, anything like that. Uh, Holdra Blue, Bloodfest Crimson. Uh, these are my, sort of some of my go-tos for, for colors that I'll often use. It's that crimson color especially. It's just so nice and rich. Uh, Amarth Blue is a frequent highlight that ends up in my, in my blue tone. So for example, in my Iron Jaws army, that's mostly Holdra and Amharth. Uh, Despair Green is a wonderful jade-ish green color that I will use uh, quite frequently anytime I'm, I'm using that kind of heavy green tone. So this, is, this, this showed up all over the place on, for example, My Daughter's a Cane, if you go back and look at those. Uh, and then finally, Acid Pink, the other half of my fluorescent uh, experience here, because I paint a lot of Slanesh and I love fluorescent colors. And I actually find that a little bit of the acid pink and a little bit of the fluorescent pink from War Colors gives you a beautiful, bright, ungodly poppy pink. Uh, and I love a poppy pink. I love to keep that pink a poppin'. So there you go. That's my go-to there. I have a review for, for both those fluorescent lines on the channel as well if you want to check them out in more detail. Regular scale 75 range. Uh, so here we have a bunch of different interesting tones. Mojave White, again, another warm white. I use a lot of these at just sort of whatever catches my fancy. Uh, basic Flesh Tone is often sort of the mid-tone when I want to use Caucasian Flesh. Uh, black Leather and African Shadow I'll mix in for, again, lots of like skin tone variation. I like them as shadow colors on reds and... Uh, other sorts of warm tones, you can use them both for like shadows on orange things, uh, and that'll look really nice. Uh, Kalahari Orange is a nice desaturated orange that shows up in my work a lot. Great for making uh, a nice filter to make bone look more interesting. Great for just, you know, you're doing pumpkins or orange out in nature or something. It's, it's wonderful there because it's not like fire orange. It's just in your face. In your face! It's a little bit more laid back than that. Uh, Adriatic Blue is a super great bright blue. I'll use it to go above sort of the Amharth and really make a poppin', you know, high highlight blue. And then Deep Blue, quite the opposite, is often a deep, deep blue shade. Uh, it's a deep blue something. I'm not sure what, but it's, it's something. Dowler Rowney FW inks. Yes, uh, these should be, these three inks should be on every painting table if you're painting miniatures. Uh, when you're done with this video, you should be flipping over to Amazon or going to your local Michaels or craft store, or hobby store, art store, whatever you have near you and getting these three inks. White, Payne's Gray, and Burnt Umber. Use them in basically every project. Everyone. You want to do sharp freehand. Great. White ink, black, you know, Payne's Gray, perfect. You want some great, good cold shadows, Payne's Gray. It does the job. Not black, a little bit of blue, more, much more visually interesting. Uh, burnt umber, you want some nice earth tones, you want 
mud, you want leather color, you want to glaze over top of something and turn it brown, but still have a lot of visual interest because there's some green in there. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, when I say I use these every single time, it's not an exaggeration. Uh, if I'm doing panel lining or stuff, I'll get out the Payne's gray. So there's just there's just an, uh, a crazy amount of uses for this. Uh, oh, uh, edge highlighting with uh, when I want to do sharp edge highlights on non-metallic. Boom, white ink in the mix, ready to go. You know, these just get mixed in with a lot of other colors often to, to uh, add that ink flow to the paint. Uh, I, there's a lot more colors I'll often use, so there are other colors in this line. It should be understood that I'm using other paints that aren't just what's here. These are just the most common go-tos. But this ink line in general gets a lot of use. But these are the three. This is the uh, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it were, of your, your painting table with inks. Secret Weapon Miniatures. Uh, so Secret Weapon, it seems a bit unusual. I don't know if many people are aware that Secret Weapon has a paint line as well, uh, but they're great. They're wonderful paints. And Old Rust, Brown Rust, and Rubber are three colors I use quite a lot. The Old Rust is very red. The Brown Rust is very brown. So it's an orange brown because all brown is just orange. And uh, if that's to say all neutral browns are orange. You obviously you can turn browns other colors by adding green, red, and other things like that, purple and stuff. Uh, and then rubber, which I use for like all the time for things like pants and belts. When you want to have a great gray tone, it's good for rubber too, by the way, for like actual tires. It's fantastic there. Uh, I use that rubber for if you're doing a Space Marine, they have the or or um, or a Stormcast, and they have that kind of suit that shows under the armor panels. You know, that kind of rubbery, I, I assume it's like a rubber-ish thing that's sort of the the carapace or whatever that the armor is attached to. Uh, rubber is your like my go-to color for that. And then I shade it with Payne's Gray and highlight it with a little ice blue. And there you go. Bing, bang, boom. We've got ourselves a rock and roll hoochie coo. So uh, those are, these are really three that show up often. Obviously, I also use the rust colors for rust, <laughs> like actual weathering. I, I believe their supposed purpose. Uh, but they're they're great as just brown paints. I, I I will frequently use them as both, even on the same project where I'll something I need to turn brown. Great, I'll use some secret weapon stuff, and then I'll go back and use that same those same paints to then create uh, rust effects later on. Finally, of course, you thought I forgot because we left Vallejo and I didn't mention them, but no, no, we saved the best for last. Uh, when metal paints, uh, as you know, this is the only time that I'll that I uh, I really uh, have a, a singular brand preference. Uh, Vallejo metal color. There are no other metal paints that hit my my table. Uh, these are the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega. Uh, these are the answer, whatever the question. They, uh, I have the four that I go to most often here, steel, silver, copper, and gold. There are other colors in the range that I do use as well, obviously. Uh, but, you know, these are just absolutely my 100% go-to. They are smooth. They are liquid. They're so easy to manipulate. The pigment is ultra fine. They go on with brush or airbrush. Every other metal is basically junk compared to these. Every other acrylic metal. Uh, there are lots of wax-based, enamel-based, uh, alcohol, oil-based metals, whatever, that can perform a lot differently and achieve the same effects, probably even better, like Alclad 2, for example. Um, but those require a lot different sort of tools and things to work with and could be a little more challenging. Uh, so when, if we're going to stick within the acrylic space, uh, these are absolutely my go-to metals. They have a shine like no other. There's no bumpy pigmentation left behind. Uh, the only thing even close to them is, is Scale 75's line, their, their steel line, like speed metal and stuff like that. But even that just doesn't really compare to the great shine you get out of these. Uh, so ultimately, uh, these are just my go-to metal. I, I cannot recommend them enough. When I see people using inferior metals and I can see that massive texturing on models it's just i uh, it just doesn't look good uh so at any rate there you go that's my go-to paints uh obviously i like i said i do use other paints beyond this i have a ton of paints uh, i'll it will we'll jump in a second here to just i'll show you little pictures 
of my of my uh my sort of paint racks that I have. And by the way, you should organize your paints and keep them all well organized. An organized hobby desk is a happy hobby desk. Uh, I, you know, getting all these down and taking pictures took me a few seconds per time because they're all well organized and I know where everything is. So organize your stuff. Nail polish racks are the go-to, whether they're standalone or on the wall, as you'll see that I have. Uh, but they're, they're just absolutely essential. If your paints are all just sitting out on your desk or in a shelf or something or, you know, if you've got any extra space or a blank wall, I would highly recommend that. Uh, just that's a that's a life tip. It'll help you paint a lot faster, be more efficient, and be happier. But uh, there you go. Those are my those are my go-to paints. I use a lot of other colors, but these are the ones that most frequently show up in my uh, on my wet palette and in my projects. So I, I hope this was helpful and useful. Uh, these are colors that I like. I like all the properties of these paints for various reasons. Um, they all do what they say on the tin well. That is to say, I don't find working with any of these paints annoying. They're all relatively uh, smooth. They all blend well. Uh, they all cover well where I need them to. They're all pigmented enough that I can sort of mix them. Like None of these are challenging paints where, they're, where you have to fight the paint to get it to work. And that's why I like them. I like paint that does what it's supposed to do. It's in the name, you know paint things because it's paint so that's mainly what you know i i decide on i don't have a lot of brand loyalty there are other good brands uh, so for example you're not going to see any p3 anywhere here or anything like that that's not meaning that p3 are bad i'm in no way maybe very let me end on this note i am in no way saying any paint color i didn't mention here or paint line such as p3 i didn't mention here is bad a reaper is bad no 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 I, I have some Reaper paints and I use them on occasion. I like them just fine, but they're not my go-tos. But you can use whatever go-tos you like. Uh, if you have some paints you like and you're enjoying them, other than metal paints, uh, then keep using those. If they're working for you, they're working for you. These all just suit my personal tastes, style, application, you know, the, the way that I work. These are the ones that I like. So there you go. That's the video. If you liked it, give it a like. Uh, I'll end with just some fun pictures of my paint racks here so you can see what I mean. And uh, as always, I very much appreciate you watching this one. Uh, like I said, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. If you've got questions or suggestions for future topics, drop those down below. That's always appreciated. But as always, I thank you very much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.